Hey guys, in this video uh, we're gonna talk about how I did the drive the 7 segment using the ESP03 and the shift register. If you haven't seen the video, go back one. I did a little demo there. But uh, this video is about the circuit. If you are interested in replicating this and learning and making other things, it doesn't have to be driving a 7 segment. You can drive anything you want in there. So first, let's talk about the circuit. So as you can see, uh, I have an FTDI. This is a 5 volt FTDI. And that's the ESP. Oh, by the way, this thing is so tiny. This is the original um, ESP01. And this is the ESP03 I just recently got. It's almost like half the size. It's like almost the size of a pencil eraser and definitely smaller than a... You could hide it underneath a, uh, a battery. A, 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 a AA battery. So anyway. Pretty cool. Um, I saw uh, you have to. Uh, if you get this, you have to solder your own leads. And I don't know how well you could see this. I might do another video where I solder this. I just solder uh, little wires uh, left over from LEDs that I've cut from my LED cube. So I save all those little snippets of uh, L uh, wires, and I solder them here one at a time. It took a little time, but it wasn't that hard. Anyway, so. Uh, let's talk about a circuit. Let's go from left to right. Um, this is the uh, FTDI that I got over here. And he's only, of course, needed to so we can put code in there. Once the code is in there, we don't need this anymore. And then, uh, so that goes to the PC. You can use cool term, you could use my Lua um, editor, I mean, Lua uploader, and um, Pete Scargold did create a very nice serial terminal much more elegant than mine a lot more features than mine but anyway so from here you uh, hook up the uh, TX from the FTDI into the RX of the uh, ESP there is a uh, level shifter because my FTDI is a 5 volt FTDI um, so that's a 1k over here and a 1.8k over here that brings this about 3k, I mean 3 volts here. So the 5 volts coming here is converted into about 3 volts over here. That seems to work for me. Other people use this different values, but this is the one that works for me. So uh, the uh, on the other side, I do not put anything because this is 3 volt coming out. And the FTD apparently is tolerant enough that it will take the 3.3 and treat it as if it's a 5 volt signal. Uh, there is no positive in here because the positive that's coming out of here is 5 volt and both this and this and this I connect them all to a 3.3 volt powered by this uh, I think I use this one UA78M33C basically a 3.3 volt voltage regulator um, I think mine is like a 1 amp but about 500 milliamp is about all you need maybe a little less even but uh, yeah 5 volt coming in here on the left side yeah, basically coming in on the left side here is the input, the middle is the uh, ground, and the uh, right side is the output. That's 3.3. So that's that. And then this 3.3 is the same as all the pluses. Everywhere you see plus is the 3.3 the 3.3 volt. Okay, that takes care of the communication between the FTDI and the uh, ESP. So let's just go down the line here. I don't know which one is pin 1, but I use the antenna as my guide. So, leftmost is ground. This is just power. I think the power is right here and right there. It powers the whole thing. And this one is not connected. We already talked about that. It's important not to bring the reset. Um, so the reset is positive. Yeah, right here. I, I have little tiny wires. These guys are kind of messy, so I use, again, remnants from my LED cube. So that's um, preventing, from, preventing it from resetting itself. This is the enable, I think CHPD, I'm not sure what it stands for, but that enables it. And then this is the output of the antenna, if you have an external antenna, which I don't. So that's not connected to anything. That's 3.3 volt. And then these are all the I.O. pins. And only a few of them you can use, because some of them are being used, like this one here is very important. Uh, make sure that you connect this to plus 5. That's this one right here, this white one right here. I have it connected to plus 5 right now. But when you are 
uh, putting the Lua um, firmware onto here, which is what I use, make sure that it's connected to ground, and then you run the firmware uh, uploader and upload the Lua, Lua firmware in here, and then you bring this back to positive. And then uh, this one is actually unused. Uh, you can hook up another thing. I'm, I'm actually not using it. This one is ground. Oh, uh, big thanks to Pete Scargill for uh, outlining all these pins. I learned this from him. Let's see what else. Oh, yeah. And then the, the three, these three are the, actually the ones that I use. So one of them I use for the clock for the safe register, another one for the data, and another one for the latch. So those three goes to here, of course. These are the safe registers, data, latch, and lock. Uh, and clock, I'm sorry. And this is uh, output enabled, but it has an uh, an inverse on it, so you put that to ground to enable the output. And then uh, positive, negative here. And then the rest of them are actually the data spec uses Q0, whatever, but I use this. My convention is basically segment A, B, C, D, E, F, G and then the decimal point. So these labels are for those. So basically I, this is how I hook them up. You know, all these outputs from the shift register goes through all the inputs of the LED uh, seven segment display, which I do not have the specs for because I just found this in my bin. No idea which <laughs> kind it is, but you could find similar LEDs, I'm sure. So that's that. And then a little bit the table again, huge thanks to, uh, um, the team at uh, uh, Node MCU, they are they've done a fantastic job with this firmware. I really enjoy using it because unlike the AT command, you actually write your whole code in here, so you don't need the Arduino, and it's interpretive, interpreted, so you can try commands, you know, like print and stuff. I'll, we'll talk about more more that when we talk about the code. But anyway, these are all the pins I, uh, that I got from the documentation. So that's the zero, the actual. ESP03 pin is here, but within the code, these are the numbers we use. And we have one, two, three, four that we can use. One, two, three, four that we can use. Again, this one has to be grounded for whatever reason, I'm not sure why, but you have to ground that. And then this one you can use after you burn the firmware, but make sure that when you turn it on, this has to be high. And afterwards, you can do whatever you wish with it. But uh, at boot time, if this is ground, it thinks that you are trying to burn the uh, firmware. So I think that's everything to talk about here. Let's look at some code.